Good evening. Praise God, praise God. Good evening. This is Overseer M. Alexander, and I would like to welcome you to Words for the Soul, week 35. All right, go ahead and call your girlfriend, your friend, let them know that Words for the Soul is on. Amen. Words for the Soul is coming to intentionally to uplift, to encourage, to empower you, to inspire, to heal, to let you know that you are chosen, you are forgiven, and you are accepted and loved by God. I'm so excited this evening. We have a few of our men of iron from the true vine. And men of iron um, means uh, men that are Christ-like as standards of manhood. They're training as what, what they do. They empower other men to be godly men, husbands, fathers, sons, and ambassadors for Christ that God has called them to be. And um, I'm so excited to have them be on tonight. We have our Archdeacon um, Terry Relaford. We have our assistant I'm a pastor, associate pastor, Pastor Jeff Bell, and we have Deacon John Piper. So we're so excited to have you this evening. And we have our own bishop, Bishop Trevor Alexander. Thank y'all for being on Amen. with words for the soul this evening. <laughs> Praise God. So as um, I asked the first question, you can introduce yourself who you are and then just share about that situation. I'm going to start off with Brother Piper and then pick up from after him. So I'm going to ask you, how is it for you being a black father, a scholar, one who's been in the military? Um, how's that been being in America or when you've been overseas? How has that been for you? What experiences have you had? It's been very enriching and rewarding overall, especially once I'll start from the military and work my way down. As far as being in the military and being able to experience different countries, different cultures, it gives you a true appreciation okay. for being an American. It really okay. does. I mean, you, you get a different point of view from other countries and their standpoints, and then you learn to appreciate, you know, I do appreciate the things that we have. I appreciate the ability to have free speech. I appreciate the ability to communicate openly and honestly and choose our elected officials instead of being them being chosen for you. Okay. Um, as far as being a scholar, for me, it's it's an exceptional thing based off of my early childhood, my upbringing, mm -hmm. um, and my ability to have to overcome some um, deficiencies. All so right. I'm very proud of the work that I've done and the ability to gain my master's. Um, well, my bachelor's and my master's. So for me, it's leading directly into children. It, it's one of those things where it's like, you know what? There is no excuse. All right. You all guys right. have all, you have, due to society and technology, you have all the advantages that I never had, which that's not a knock, but it, if I can do it with my deficiencies, I know you can easily do it. Um, or you should be able to do it with out your without those same deficiencies. All but right. it's, it is definitely rewarding and challenging, to say the least. All Amen. right, thank you, Archdeacon Terry. Okay, can you pose the question one more time? Sure. How is it being a black father, a husband, or the one who's been in the military in America today? You know, times have changed from years ago from our parents and the life, the lives that they lived and the way that they live. Now that we've come up in America as men ourselves, it's it's a lot different. It's similar, but it's also a lot different because you can, you've seen the changes and the lack of changes over the years for a black man. Right, right. There's always been hindrances to hold you down and hold you back. Mm -hmm. But just your outward skin color is an instant mark against you, it seems like, in America today. It's gotten better, but it still has a long way to go. Thank you. You know what, before I have Pastor Jeff share, I wanna read something I read from um, Dr. Tony Evans. And, his, and he said, far too often, 
trying to force unity when authentic unity cannot be mandated or manufactured. Instead, God says we are to preserve the unity of the spirit in Ephesians 4 and 3. The Holy Spirit has created our unity. It is our job to preserve it because sometimes people are not going to be fair. So thank you for sharing that. Pastor Jeff. Well, my, my situation, I'm not going to say was unique, but uh, I can say I was blessed. Okay. Um, I have a chance to uh, fulfill my childhood dream to become a pilot. Okay. And that was a unique challenge being black, uh, dealing with the bureaucracy, but I felt isolated because it seems like I was the only one that was happy for me. Oh, okay. And I, I, I learned a lesson uh, early on that uh, when you have competition, right. somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. Hmm. And so I decided instead of competing against other people, mm -hmm. I would compete against my own ignorance, my own lack of understanding and uh, my weaknesses. That way, uh, I win-win. All right, I hear you. I'm not competing. I'm not hurting anyone. But you know, while I was in flight school, I thought I was failing the whole time, and ended up graduating with honors. Praise God! Because I kept challenging myself. I didn't let what other people said tear me down. In other words, I really enjoyed people talking bad about me, saying, oh, "You can't do this," because I used that as fuel. Yeah, there you go. Yes, to sir. push me yes. mm -hmm. to show them that, you know, I could do this. Right. But I, I did a lot of dangerous things. I put my life on the line a lot of times. I uh, put my career on the line a lot of times trying to prove. And one day I just woke up, you know, God said, no, don't do it this way. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be eager and to use uh, negativity to fuel you, but don't be risky with it. In other words, like the Bible said, don't tempt God. All right. That's good. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Bishop? Um, I, I was just thinking, look, looking at the, these men on the on the line here, you have um, Deacon Piper, who served in the Navy. Um, I was speaking, Terry, who served in the Marines. Uh, Pastor Jeff served in the Army, and I served in the Army. Mm -hmm. And I think each of us, in our own perspective places, have challenges in and of itself. Right. Mm -hmm. um, each one of those, they were roadblocks. They were avenues to succeed, but sometimes they were roadblocks. Mm -hmm. And I think we succeeded because we didn't let the roadblocks stop us. Right. And I seen people come in and I saw them at uh, the same challenges I had faced and they stopped, they right. halted. Like Pastor Jeff, one of the fastest way to get me to do something is to tell me I can't do it. Right. Because there's something inside of me that says, oh, really? Watch me, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so the joy in, for me is doing what People say I cannot do. And so oftentimes I heard people say I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that. Um, um, like Deacon Piper, I had I some learning deficiencies. Still have them. Still have them to this day. Mm -hmm. But that was also, um, I didn't feel you know, it's interesting. I didn't fully understand all of my learning deficiencies until my daughters came along yeah. and tried to help them also help me. But I didn't allow those, those deficiencies to determine who I am. I learned to push through those and overcompensate for the things that I didn't have. So if I if I had if I was slow in learning, I would start learning two or three weeks early. Mm -hmm. Give me the module, I study that. So I can when you time you get to there, I'm already from, uh, proficient. That's yes. how I overcame so much of my my decision. Well, wonderful. It sounds like all of you, even your own perspective, you had some things that you had to overcome. But through it all, you just said I'm going to press through and become or do what needs to be done. So I thank you for that, and I honor you guys for who you are. Um, my next question is, have you as a black man in America felt challenged and had others tried to make you feel less than, um, and that could be in your own community and that could be outside your community. I know for being a black female woman, I've, I've had challenges coming up. So I'm gonna ask you that for the men, would y'all please share whoever would like to go. Deference, so let this go first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I've, I've had that done mostly in the academic world. Okay. In academia, it's a there's an internal um, always try, somebody trying to one up. When I graduated from Harvard or from one of those Ivy schools, and you you know these competition goes in in and out. But it's interestingly in, in many of the settings I was in, 
I was usually the only black or few black in the room. And, um, and you know, in our community, when we walk in a room and we see three or four black men, we have to acknowledge each other, right? That's kind of like that, that unwritten rule. And if you don't at least give me the head nod, then it, we kind of look at you kind of crazy, right? I would walk in a room, give the head nod, and then get it back. And I'm like, oh, so it's going to be that type of room, right? Mm -hmm. And so I find myself sitting at tables sometimes when I was the only one. And I found at times information being withheld from me, huh. right? Yes. So I've yeah. learned how to play this game. I learned to play stupid so people think that, oh, that I need their help to get the information. And then once I got the information, you can't take back. So I have to learn to play this um, smart, mm. dumb, smart game to shrink and to increase so I can get information. So, so knowledge was, is power. Knowledge is power. All right. But sometimes they, when people feel threatened, they will hold information. I, I, I've had that happen as well. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the uh, we have to dummy down sometime effect. When, when, when you see what the crowd is early mm -hmm. and, and you walk, you don't want to raise the eyebrow when you walk in, but within two minutes, you're going to get a, a feel for what the room is. Yes. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and, and as black men, we still have to do this every day. My, my, my. Because we don't know, even now at 60 years old, I've still heard that that boys thing, you know. Yeah. Boy, this, what, excuse me? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just as old and just as gray as you are, and you're calling me a boy? Come on now. It happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to look at the way that they were brought up. They, mm -hmm. they have racism and prejudice everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we choose to lift ourselves up and move above it, move around above that, because we already know that that's going to be negativity that will bring you down in, in your daily walk and with, with people you'll tend to want to shut them off. So you have to overlook the food per se and keep okay. moving. All right. Let the Lord right. guide your path. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. You want to go, Pastor Jeff, or you want me to go? You go right ahead, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you, sir. Um, for me, I've had challenges in the military, quite a few, especially as my education increase, my knowledge base increase, like you say, knowledge is power. It becomes way more complicated or difficult. And so I've had those issues. The biggest challenge I've had mm -hmm. realistically um, was when I left the military, surprisingly mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. um, I was working for, I only worked for TxDOT for eight months, but I was a, um, engineering technician for him. And uh, I had a road construction project and one of the contracts who had the project, he just, he felt that, okay, you didn't go to, since you came and worked for TxDOT, worked for the government, instead of going to work for an engineering firm, you know, I can try and correct you or put you in your place. Um, based off of just standard mathematical measurements. I'm like, okay, well, you can't, well, no, this is how I did on the computer. I'm like, but we're standing out here physically and look at the measurement, look at the numbers. Don't, please don't take my word for it. Look at the numbers. You're not, you're supposed to do it this other way. No, you're not. This, so he got upset and stormed off and everything. And I was like, okay, no problem. We went back and I talked to my boss, explained the situation. And she was like, I'll take care of it. She called him and corrected him and said, you know, um, you're not talking to a guy who doesn't have experience, I mean, just some experienced engineering tech, whatever. He's actually an engineer. So he's doing, he's doing his job. He's doing it the way one, we showed him and two, he's also doing it based off of his knowledge and experience. So, you know, before you try to correct somebody and ask them and talk to them about, okay, well, where they could and could not work. It was a challenge for me to get him here. You know, because he had other options and other um, better mm -hmm. paying jobs that he turned down to come here just so he could relocate to Texas. So please understand, you're not talking to someone who doesn't know. So, mm -hmm. 
sometimes people just assume just yes. because you're not in a, a certain place that you're saying or working for a certain firm doesn't mean that you don't have the, the, um, the knowledge or the experience and you showed you did. And you know, the thing I would say um, that was really wonderful when you know who you are, where you're working yes. at, you don't have yes. to go off on somebody. You know what yes. I know what I'm doing? I know who to report to and they can handle it. I'm just going to do my job. So can, that's awesome. Can I get him? Good. Yeah. I, just get him. I remember I was in a situation thing with the job and um, stuff was coming and they were going off and doing this and the other. And I knew I was right. So I kept my kept my peace. Mm -hmm. And when the person came that was had the solution and I came and he started going down the route I was going and I was saying to myself, Jesus, don't come now. Don't come now. Don't, don't let there be a rapture because I want to see the look on his face. There's a, there's a certain type of um, feeling when you know you're right and you know you don't have to defend being right. Yeah. When the right hits it, right is right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Pastor Jim? Yeah, my situation, uh, I had several, uh, but what stood out the most with me was I learned to create the culture around me. All right. Uh, I think I went in the Army at age 19. And at age 21, I was already a sergeant, mm -hmm. uh, already at, 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 uh, getting ready to go for the board for the E6 board. I mean, so I was I was moving because I was I was not trying to impress anybody, but that challenge in myself that when I did something, it had to be done right. All right. And not only, you know, that, that old saying good enough for government work. Right. Well, that, that didn't work for me. Well, good enough right. for me. I've heard it said, yes, sir. <laughs> it didn't work for me. That's and true. and the people that work for me, uh, they were saying, but you crazy. Why we got to do all that? Everybody else going home. I said, I don't care what everybody else do. What we going to do is do it right. Yeah. And then uh, I started doing things like uh, I went and became soldier of the quarter, soldier of the month, I mean, soldier of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, NCO of the quarter, NCO, uh, I was running her NCO of the year for Fort Hood. All right. For the whole, all of Fort Hood. Mm -hmm. I came in second. The guy beat me up by half a point because his saw major gave him the extra half a point. Mm -hmm. But I took that knowledge and I made it a training center. When we had School of the Soldier, and I don't mm -hmm. understand that one, mm -hmm. that's what I taught my people. And so when they started doing good, they looked at me and said, wait a minute. This dude, he didn't want it. Now all his people went in it. There's something about him. And they started giving me all the so-called mess ups. Okay. And when I straighten them out, then they take them from me and give me somebody else. And I'm like, that's okay. I didn't like it at first. I got upset. But I said, you know what? They realize my importance. Oh, they know who I am. There you go. I like that. And, and, and as you were saying, Pastor Jeff, you made me think about when there's a child in the classroom and some people say, well, oh, you're not going to better reach that child. But a teacher that has a passion, a desire will find a way to help that child to come up to get to where they need to be. And as you said, those who said they were going to give you the worst of the worst, but no matter what, if you have determination, you have a way of philosophy, I'm going to reach them in whatever it takes to get them to know what they need to do. And that's what you did. And that's what we have to do in today's society as you as men. And I know you mentor. Um, different men and uh, young people, um, it makes a difference when you have determination to show them the example of how it is to be um, in America. Yeah. Do you have something else I, you can you know, Obviously, yeah. I only have, out of the 20 years I spent in the military, I only had one soldier who I just could not reach, and we ended up terminating him out of, you know, mm -hmm. out of the military. But out of 20 years and all the soldiers I supervised, only one. That's a and, blessing. And, and, and I pat myself on the back for that. Amen. That's beautiful. You know, can, can go, I ahead. Jump on yeah, go ahead. Go I, ahead. I, just, I just appreciate that last statement you made, Pastor Jeff, about patting yourself on the back. I think as men, we, we need to be able to uh, encourage ourselves. Yes. Right? yes. I think sometimes we, we see challenges, we look for challenges, but we, we also need to take the time to smell the, smell the roses, drink the yes. coffee, pat ourselves yes. because. It don't come often. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't come, you got to learn how to pack yourself on the back. Yes. All right. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, I'm going to ask you this. Would you give us some words of wisdom that you can share with those who are listening 
And those who are watching right now, if you haven't shared and liked this page, like and share this page. This is words of wisdom that can help your young men, your, your sons, your, um, your husband, anyone. So share this. What words of wisdom can you give to our listeners that would empower them can continue to move through the trying times that we're facing in today's society? I'm going to start with um, Deacon Piper. Honestly, for me, it's stay the course. Stay the course. Stay, stay the course. I say that because you're going to hit roadblocks. You're going to have deterrence. You're going to have people, as we've all experienced, telling you, oh, you can't do that. And the biggest thing, I mean, I, I'm my wife uh, tells me all the time, "We everybody's not you, everybody's not you. Mm -hmm. And that's because when I'm told no, right, I make it a yes. And they're trying to figure, well, how do you, you just keep pushing, pushing. And that's because I stay the course. All right. Mm -hmm. That's powerful right there. Because there's so many people right now who want to give up. People have lost their job and going to different things. And I thank you for sharing that. And if you guys have not checked that in there, put in there, stay the course. Encourage somebody in your family. Remind them to stay the course. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Um, I'm going to call you Dr. Piper. It's coming. Um, <laughs> it's coming. Archdeacon. Don't do that. My would you give us some, would you give us some words of wisdom? You know, I'm blessed to have you two for great leaders that keep me focused, keep me straight, to keep me from going left or right. And if I do veer, you kind of snatch me back in. Real <laughs> in. I thank God for you too. Because we get to talk all the time on daily, uh, not on the daily, but about issues, this, that, and the other, the lives we've lived and what goes on. My dad at my dad's funeral, they the, the the pastor preached about the pattern. My dad lived his life according to a pattern and it he didn't veer off course. He stayed true to that course okay. mm -hmm. up until he was 86 when he passed away. Mm -hmm. And if, if you keep your eye on God, all right. yes, if sir. you keep your eye on God and, and all those distractions, they're just that. They're distractions. They're not what you're looking for. Tune out the distractions. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, All right now. and your life will be so enriched by it. All right. There's nothing, nothing you can't go through. And when you can't, you feel like you can't go through. Holler out the name of Jesus. All right Amen. now. The fanatics said, "Well, oh, he's crazy. Amen. He's a nut." No, I'm going to call on the one Amen. I know that you know. Jesus help me. So, yes. Yes. Help me. Amen. Yes, yes, There's power in that name. Hallelujah. Yes, there mm -hmm. is. Amen. Yes, Praise God. Pastor Jeff. Well, there's just two principles that I, I live my life by uh, that I would love to everyone to, to live by that. And number one is leadership loves problem solvers. Mm -hmm. That's number one. You, you have to be a problem solver. Mm -hmm. You don't have to running around bragging about, I know this, I know that. Just get in the books, do the research, do the little extra work. Mm -hmm. uh, watch, be attentive when processes and, and things are going on. So you know, you understand from A to Z. And that way, because I use the process of, of, of back planning. I go start at the end and come back to the beginning. And so I know what I need to do. Yes. And, and that to me, being a problem solver, man, I tell you. And then the last thing is take pride in your work. All right. Beautiful. My father taught us, if you're going to put my name on it, it's got to be done right. Do you understand me, son? Yes, sir. So right. we learn if I'm going to put Jeff Bell's name on it. It's got to be done right. I don't care we have to tear it all down. <laughs> it's totally over. It's got to be done right. And I've been called some names that I can't say. <laughs> I've had tires slash, car scratch, but when inspection time come, everybody's got ear-to-ear -ear greens. 
That's beautiful. Yeah. Our name should mean something. It should say when you're Alexander, a Relaford, a Piper, a Bell, it means something. Whatever the God, the God, the God, the name that God has given you for those who are watching, your name means something. You're powerful. You say you're fearfully and wonderfully made in God's image. If you're made in God's image, God don't make no junk. So what mm -hmm. you do or what you perform and what you produce mm -hmm. should not be junk. So excellence does not produce junk. So don't allow the enemy to tell you you're producing junk. Amen. All right, Bishop. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to say because you're going to snap because <laughs> <laughs> I was going to read the, script, the scripture, but I'm going to read it anyway. Okay. Ecclesiastes 7 and 1 says, a good name, good name. is better than precious ointment mm -hmm. at the day of one's death than the day of mm -hmm. one's birth. And I use that and I've, that's been my mantra uh, because she doesn't steal my thunder because my father drilled it in us. Yeah. When I was younger, I thought we were royalty. Yeah. He thought about the name Alexander as if it was royalty. I kid you not, I grew up thinking I was somebody, somebody, right? And because the way he protected that name, my father is the oldest, and so he's a, the patriarch of the family. Mm -hmm. And so when my grandfather died, he took on that, 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 that uh, figure, the yeah, patriarch. And he carried it well and still carries it well. And he taught it to all of us. And I tried to do my best to teach it to my children. Because once you understand your name, right. what that name stands for, you don't fall for mess. And so I don't get, I associate with mess. I try to stand for righteousness because that name means more to me and than anything else. You know, you can give me riches and I've been tempted with riches, but that came with a cost and, they, and that cost may be my good name and I walked away. And so um, protect your name because the, the only thing you really come in this world with is the name your parents gave you and the name you're born into. And I don't have time to go into the differences, the nuances, but the, that, that your first name is the identifier within your family, but your family name is who you are, your sure. culture, your values, all of that comes in there. And so protect it, protect it well. Amen. Amen. As we get ready to close, I'm going to ask Pastor Jeff if he will close us in prayer. But yes, I thank you for that. The words of wisdom that you have shared, that you have encouraged, you have enlightened us. Um, thank you so much for the wealth of knowledge that you have gone through, the struggles you have gone through. And it, it just listening to you, the struggles that you've gone through, you didn't give up. You no. stayed the course. You called on Jesus. You had a, a goal, you had a plan, and you knew who you were, and that helped you to keep going in the plan that God has for you. So thank you yes. so much for being part of Words for the Soul. Pastor Jeff. Before, before I, I want to say thank you, gentlemen, for being um, leaders at True Vine, being go. leaders in your in your in your family, um, and for letting your light so shine. Yeah, you are definitely doing that. Amen. Where you go, and you can Amen. tell that. Yes. <laughs> well. Uh, one little last little nugget there, Bishop, and you you understand this. I, all of us would understand this. Never let your leadership be blindsided. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You can stop your leadership from being blindsided. I don't care if it's bad news. <laughs> Tell them. Tell them. Yeah. Because they find out you knew and you Yay. didn't say nothing. It ain't that pretty. Yeah. Praise God. Yes. That's cool. So we thank you, Father, we just give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor. We thank you, God, for all that was said tonight. It is our prayer, God, that these words of wisdom, these pearls and nuggets, God, of wisdom will permeate the hearts of your people and cause them to not be quitters, but to cause them to be more than conquerors, to cause them to press towards the mark of the high calling to be good soldiers and to endure hardship as a good soldier. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Again, I want to say thank you for joining us. I am Overseer Emma Alexander. Thank you for being with me with Words of the Soul. I want to say again, thank you to our Bishop, Bishop Trevor Alexander. Praise thank God. You, my Archdeacon, my Archdeacon Terry Relaford, Deacon John Piper, and our Associate Pastor Jeff Bell. Thank you again for being a part of Words for the Soul. Join us next Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Tell somebody, set your clock. Yeah, sure. Next Sunday, he just loves me to, to give you a foreshadow of what's coming. You know, it's like coming to the movie. You got a preview of coming to the give you that, the yeah. advertisement. Yeah. the previews. Yes. So next Sunday, the Lord has blessed that I have a, a friend of ours who has um, had COVID. 
Um, went to the hospital, was on a ventilator for six days. Um, he's going to share his testimony. And then I have another person who's going to be on as they're going through the, the COVID now, the symptoms that they're going through. So join us as, we're, um, as we've been praying. I know you've been praying for first um, essential workers, those are in the hospital, yes. just hearing somebody who has overcome and how God is blessed. So we want to encourage you with words of testimony on next week. So join us next week. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you all.